All right, so what did you come up with? How do we do it? What does every table need? It needs a unique ID, right? So we're going to have a unique ID for the Reynolds table. Cool. That's the first thing. Every table, unique ID. What else do we need to capture? Category of unique. Okay, so we need to keep the customer that rented it, right? How are we going to record that? The minimal least amount of information possible. Because every time you store information, there's a cost associated with it. There's a write cost. There's a storage cost. It takes time to write every single bit of information. So there's a write cost. There's a storage cost. You, you got to store those zeros and ones. Right? So we want to store the least amount of information possible. Write the least amount of information possible. Makes things go faster. Makes lookups go faster. We have to retrieve less information it's faster. So what's the least amount of information we could store to record which customer rented the movie? Unique ID. Customer ID. Customer ID. But here we have a problem. Because if I just write, oh, customer ID is the field ID. Uh-oh. <laughs> I've got ID ID. So one of the things you want to do when you create your tables is you want to prefix all of your fields with something which identifies which table that field is from. Okay? So this would now be customer ID. This would now be rental ID. This would now be movie ID. Movie rating, movie... And you want these things to be descriptive too so you understand what the fields are so when you see them in code, right? Like if you see name in code, you're not, you're not like, is that customer name? Is that movie name? Is that dog name? I don't know what that is, <laughs> right? Like you're going to be looking at code that's accessing the data. You're going to be referencing these fields, and you're going to be like, what is his name? But if you have C name, CL name, oh, customer last name, sweet, I totally know what that is. And if I have RID, rental ID, sweet, customer ID, and then movie ID. And now we are keeping track of all the information we need to keep track of. The minimal amount of information that we need to keep track of for uh, that transaction. We might also put in date, right? And if we had salespeople, right, like this, but we don't because it's online, we might record IP address. You know, what IP address were you at when you rented that? So that later, if there's a dispute, you know, we say, well, this customer is always from an IP address in Fresno, California most of the time. Sometimes they travel, mostly in America. And that rental came from Bangladesh. All right, we'll throw that one out as fraudulent, sure. You have no history of being in Bangladesh, no problem. All right, so that would be kind of like rental ID, customer ID, movie ID. We know which, which movie was rented. We know which customer rented it. And then we have a unique ID because every transaction has to have a unique ID. So we can uniquely identify it. And then we know the date it was rented. We might put the price down. You know, so we might be able to do some analysis on that later. What's up? Don't you already know like uh, R stands for R ID or C stands for customer ID? You already know, right? That the customer section? Yeah, that's why we added the prefix. Okay, but when you build systems, you always want to err on the side of clarity. So if an abbreviation is too brief, right, it may have made sense to you as the database designer, but as your business grows or you leave and they hire somebody else and you bring in somebody new and they look at it, are they going to know what RFD4 means? No. <laughs> that might have been totally clear to you, right? So always err on the side of clarity. 
and just make the description of the field a little bit longer. Okay. So you might even do cust first name. Yeah. Because code completion in, in editors when you write code makes typing that stuff. You type the first few and you hit tab or whatever. So it doesn't really have a typing cost from a coding perspective. But clarity is super important. You want your code to be clear. All right, how many people got this? Let me see a show of hands. Sweet. How many people? Oh, almost. I kind of got close. I don't know. How many I don't knowers? Because you got to stand up for yourself. All right, we're doing good. Okay, so that's, that's like the first part of databases. So we'll do a little bit review next.